Thank you for joining us for Saturn InfoTech's SDMEE Migration Webinar. Today, our experts will be talking about the migration benefits and process required when upgrading from SDM to SDMEE. I'd like to introduce our speaker first. We have Sriram Sharma. He's our senior EPM architect with 10 years of experience in technical configuration and delivery of Oracle Hyperion products. He's a certified expert in Oracle planning, Oracle S-Base, and technical infrastructure requirements. And then we have myself. I'm the marketing manager. I do all the digital marketing and creative campaign development for Saturn. On today's agenda, we'll start by telling you a little bit about Saturn InfoTech, the prerequisites and system requirements for converting, artifacts that can and cannot be migrated using a migration utility, the opportunities FCME migration presents to your business, how to build and stick to a conversion plan, and then at the end we'll open it up for a Q&A session. So a little bit about Saturn. Saturn is a BI, EPM, Big Data, and Cloud Specialized Oracle Platinum partner. We're made up of client advisors, solution architects, and Hyperion certified specialists. Our clients range from mid-market to Fortune 500 companies of all trades. And Saturn's been recognized as one of the fastest growing companies in America by Inc. 500 magazine. Here are some of our locations. Uh, Saturn's headquarters just outside Philadelphia. We also have offices up and down the East Coast, as well as Chicago and Texas. These are our clients. And here we have a 360-degree view of some of Saturn's offerings. Not only do we provide EPM and BI implementation of software, but we provide a full wheel of professional and support services. As you can see, product upgrades, enhancements, and performance optimizations. We also have many experts who specialize in CXO advisory, and they stay up to date with the best practices and industry standards. Now I'll hand it off to Sriram. Thank you, Nina. Um, Hey guys, a very warm uh, welcome to everyone. Um, today I'm going to speak about um, FDME. Um, so before we start any further, I know most of uh, you guys will be utilizing FDM already and are very keen and interested to know what FDME has to offer and is that a right tool for you and how should I migrate my FDM application to FDM? Before moving any further, let's just look on uh, end user's perspective that how FDM will uh, support them out. If I look at FDM, it's mainly classified uh, on end user uh, side on three parts, which is a centralization, user friendly and multidimensional mapping. So w w what exactly you mean by centralization? Centralization is, um, as you know already on FDM side, that you require a thick client as well as a separate URL uh, to perform your uh, daily task or a monthly task on FDM. Whereas with this uh, new implementation of FDME, you will be at a centralized workspace. Your uh, login for um, thick client will be gone. Uh, it will be easy for debugging uh, logs at uh, one place easy for users uh, to perform data load without relying on IT as well as uh, new mappings are introduced uh, with this new FDME. Here is a comparison between old versus new how FDME looks like. So as I spoke earlier that uh, work, uh, work base, uh, workbench and your web client. These are the two screenshots that you see. And this is how uh, you can access your FDME in the new environment. Uh, so you can see on the workspace, I'm just going to my administrator and then to data management uh, for looking into the application. This is again the old environment of FDM where you can see how I'm performing my mappings. Uh, it's a kind of a cumbersome and uh, complex uh, process where I have to browse for the target value to find them out. Whereas on the new um, FDME, it's much more uh, easy because source and target are on the same uh, screen. Um, I have a multi-column filter available on the system um, as well as I can uh, customize my input format based on uh, attributes as well as exports to Excel. 
Um, I have in inch ma mapping options available. You can see that target values I can easily load it as well as a, as a single place I can define mappings and can add that mappings to different rules. So that was a kind of um, a little bit introduction about uh, FDM and FDME. Before we move further into or uh, take a deep dive uh, how to upgrade your FDM to FDME, let's just look at a case study. Um, this is an implementation of FDME which we did for a global surveillance company. This company is located in Farmingdale, New York and uh, revenue wise they are 500 million. Um, it's a government defense contractor uh, company where it manufactures uh, defense surveillance uh, system. So this company was already on um, 11113 Hyperion planning as well as uh, uh, using Cognos uh, planner, um, EP planner, Cognos EP planner they were using and they were already five version behind on Windows 2003 server. So as you all know Windows, 2, 3, uh, Windows 2003 server is um, kind of um, out of its uh, life support in July 2015 and they were uh, uh, on a verge of security threats where they wanted to upgrade their system. So Titan helped them out to upgrade their uh, existing Hyperion planning to 11.124 as well as converted their Cognos planning uh, system to um, uh, Commoner CP planner to Hyperion planning and implemented FDME for their data load process. So with this uh, FDME implementation the um, client or I, I would say the financial users were kind of in full control of their data load on a ad hoc basis as well as on a monthly basis. There was no reliance on uh, IT anymore that gave them a faster uh, retrieval time of uh, reports as well as uh, their faster data refreshes, uh, no uh, dependencies, improved user productivity, they were more dynamic, more user friendly environment they were looking up and finally they were able to open up this applications on mobile device. So this was the kind of uh, key benefits the financial users got from uh, implementing FDME. Now uh, taking a deep dive uh, into how do you upgrade your FDM to FDME. These are uh, some of the prerequisites that needs to be followed before uh, we think about uh, moving to FDME application. So the first prerequisite, the first and the foremost would be that uh, your uh, patch number 21379349. That's a FDM classic to FDME migration utility that has to be applied on your environment. Your environment should be on application 1112x at least. You cannot just migrate 11.113 or 9.3.3 application. You should know all the details about your FDM application database or schema. Um, you need a working environment of 11.123.500 or higher. That utility you need it. Detail about your uh, upgraded uh, environment schemas. And finally the main part is your ODI studio should be installed and configured on the system. Now if you look at the system requirement side, the, sequ uh, the system should be FDM classic only. There should not be FDME on it, FDM classic with ERPI and the target side on FDM it should be around 123.500 version. Using this utility FDM to FDM migration utility, there are some things that you can migrate and there are some things that have to be taken care of manually. So this utility that is available that uh, takes care of all your mappings that includes your like, explicit, uh, in and between, all the historical data information, the data files that are present in your FDME to FDM EE, all the process states that you have done whatever POV that you have put it in a lock, all that, all your locations, all your import formats, whatever validation rules as well as uh, validation entities that you have defined, that all, all your logical grouping, whatever period uh, mappings that you have defined in control tables, your uh, all the dimensions as well as integration and target application settings, that all are migrated. The things that, that it doesn't take care of it is your VB script. As you know, uh, your FDME supports Jython. 
that's a combination of Java and Python. So the VB script has to be converted. Your work import scripts has to be converted into this. Whatever security that you have set up for uh, FDM, that will not be migrated and it has to be migrated manually. The logs, your archives, the import file, uh, import drive that is present on FDM, that has to be done manually. Whatever validation reports that you have to define, that uh, as well. All your logs, error logs, data logs, process logs, everything has to do uh, done manually. Your appli application settings, that has to be also taken care manually when you migrate this application out. What are the opportunities that uh, uh, a business will see after um, upgrading uh, with FDME? So, or migrating with this FDME? Um, FDME will provide you fully audit trail functionality. So you know, okay, uh, what data value was modified from what to what. You have um, any source connection capabilities. So you have something called open source interface, an ODI adapter, which can actually connect to any of the source. It provides data integrity as well as mapping consistency throughout all the applications help users to identify errors as well as uh, correct them and provide flexibility in, uh, in complexity uh, of your integration. Now, when you do this migration, right, there are some of the things that can affect very bad on uh, this migration side. So l let's look at some of the nonsense that can affect our implementation. Um, while importing the data, you can see that it automatically goes to validation. That has to be taken care. So it has to first, when this happens, you have to set it properly up. Um, validation reports are not longer available anymore in tooltips and that becomes a problem. Um, in your mappings, there is a new tab introduced called all mapping where you can just see the mapping. You can't modify it and users are stuck somewhere, sometimes over there trying to figure it out to change mappings. There is no workbench uh, available, right? And it's it's uh, a case sensitive. Um, and your uh, FDME doesn't log any mapping changes. So that becomes a most difficult uh, point in the implementation that who changed mapping from what to what. The conversion plan, how do you stick out uh, saying that how I should uh, migrate my FDM to FDME? I need to make sure that if my migration is successful, if I win this migration, I need to make sure that I evaluate all my current mappings. I review my entire metadata. I go through each and every location that is defined. Whatever import formats are used by that locations, I need to see. What is the lo logical grouping that has been set? What are the validation rules, entities are set? I need to make sure that all these things are migrated properly. Once the migration happens, I need to do test, test, and test. A kind of a regression testing on the system, making sure my system is perfect up to the mark the, the way my FDM was. If you look at some of the benefits that your organization will get after migrating to FDME is, first of all, FDM is retired, it's gone. So once you upgrade to the new version, your application has to be there in FDME. FDME comes with two tools, ODI as well as your ERPI compared to uh, FDM, just it comes with ER, ERPI only. There is seamless workspace integration with the system. Multi-platform support, multi-browser support, that means it supports not only just IE, but with Firefox and somewhat capabilities on Chrome side. Now let's look at the steps that you need to follow while you upgrade from um, FDM to FDME. These are the detailed steps that I have outlined, but we will go through each step in detail. So first step is you need to make sure there are some of the scripts that need to be run on both your schema or database of FDM and FDME. Um, you need to configure your uh, data source with ODI. If I design, define uh, scenarios in uh, your designer topology in ODI and then execute them out. So if, if you look, uh, with this utility, uh, there are scripts available and that script has to be ran on both uh, sides of your uh, database, on FDM schema as well as your uh, FDME schema. Once you execute this prerequisite SQL scripts, 
you need to make sure that you have ODI installed, it's configured, then you need to set up a logical and physical connection between your source and target and then start with your uh, import scenarios. When you start migrating, you need to make sure that you follow some standard guard, uh, guidelines. If you follow, if, if you follow that, your migration will be successful. Otherwise, you will be in trouble. For example, the artifacts that you are migrating, they cannot be more than 20 characters. First, you need to execute metadata migration. Once that is completed successfully, then only you can execute data migration. So these are some of the guideline principles that you need to follow. Once that migration is done, you need to make sure that all my application details are migrated, my source system, my import format, my location, my period mappings, my data load mappings, everything are migrated and need to perform test, test and test as I said earlier. Once this is migrated, I go to my workbench uh, on the FDME side and see everything is uh, up to the mark and everything is working uh, perfectly fine. Uh, with this, uh, I will let the session open for questions. Thank you so much, 